Hey, what's going on guys? My name is CarQ, and today we're gonna see how the Defiant utilized Batiste in a Bastion Orisa bunker comp variation to full hold Hanamura defense against the Washington Justice. The core of this composition is, of course, the Bastion Orisa Diva Baptiste. You'll often see many variations of this along with the 5th and 6th slot often switched out for different heroes. The Defiant set up the core 4 up on the high ground here, with the last two heroes being the Far Mercy combo. Most enemies can really only enter from one short entrance, plus a few small windows, making the Bastion composition fantastic on defense here to spam from one angle while the Far Mercy fires from another, giving you a very potent crossfire. Rolling out the gate, Washington recognizes the bunker setup and switches compositions immediately. They roll with Winston Diva to dive the bunker, Far Mercy to spam Yakpung's shield, then fly behind to get an off angle, then Hanzo to spam shield, and an Ana to heal the Winston Diva from the main choke point since Mercy is going to be primarily attached to the Farah. The Defiant's primary goal here is to withstand Washington's onslaught by preserving Yakpung's Orisa shield so that it stays up every time it comes off that 8 second cooldown. Diva's job is to use a little bit of Matrix here and there against Hanzo and Farah spam, but should be primarily used to eat damage for Batiste's Immortality Field. The Immortality Field should be used as a last resort if the Orisa Shield ever does go down too early and the fight gets a little bit too overwhelming. Here's a quick tip for Batiste players in a bunker comp, try to have your team set up close to the door so that when you drop the Immortality Field inside, it will protect it from line of sight of the enemy while still having the Orisa Bash and benefiting from it. Now as we watch the game roll out, Washington's Winston and Diva make the first move, an attempt to dive the bunker comp to make space for Farah and Mercy to fly in, as you can sort of see Otto's rockets flying in above the screen. Janice and Sansam get ripped apart by Asher, and with the help of Ivy on the Farah firing from them on the side, and you can see the strength of having the second DPS on a different angle. Right after this, Ivy and Aid fly into the main entrance to finish off the rest of Washington now that they've lost their tank line. Now as Washington waits for a few respawns, remember that Otto on the Farah managed to sneak past them earlier with the first initiation and has now flown off near Toronto's spawn side to pressure them from an off angle. These damage boosted rockets from Otto and Ark, along with the help of Cory's Hanzo arrows, end up breaking Yakpung's shield early. Neko and the Batiste almost got caught out and was forced to immortality back to safety in the room with the rest of the bunker. With this cooldown being forced out early and the entire bunker comp retreating inside with no suppression fire at the main entrance, Ivy and Aid on the Far Mercy got caught out in no man's land now that Janice and Sansam are back in the fight and things are looking grim for Toronto now that they have to face a 4 vs 6. Toronto rotates back to the staircase near the bell on the point and here is where the power of Batiste comes in full force. Washington now needs to execute a coordinated play to finish off the point, and despite Hanzo firing from one angle, Ana in another, and far right above them, it seems Janice didn't really want to push in just yet and waits outside the point. Because of this, Sansan flies in alone and actually loses a big chunk of his mech, forcing a retreat to get some healing. The tanks were off sync, and since they weren't actively pressuring Asher's Bastion, Envy on the D.Va didn't have to babysit him and now had a small window to bring his attention to Farah and force her to concussive out early. As this game plays out, eventually Cory does get his Dragon Strike and fires it straight into the bunker comp and Washington finally goes in. However, this is where Batiste's immortality field here was the MVP, as you can see Asher just sits through the entire dragon since the drone was safely tucked away behind the wall and behind Orisa's shield. Hanzo's dragon strike itself cannot damage the drone. Fire was forced out and had no line of sight of the drone as it was protected by Yakpunk's shield. Winston did not have a Tesla cannon angle on it based on where he jumped in, and D.Va got demeked immediately trying to fly behind and break it. So with the help of the Immortality Field, Asher survives, gets his ultimate, and finishes off D.Va, and meanwhile, despite Janice and Addo alting on to the backline to take down Neko, so much time had elapsed during this fight that Ivy and Ada respawned and re-entered the fight, and took down Guido off-screen. Washington was forced to reset, and Toronto had successfully fended off the 4 vs 6. Now we're gonna skip ahead past the downtime and get right into the final fight. Toronto had rotated the bunker all the way around past the bell and a little bit off the point because Washington had moved up and was wrapping around the coastal side of the map. The key in this final fight is Neko's Batiste positioning here up on the high ground. As Washington attempted another Dragon Strike play, Batiste was able to get the Immortality Field out of line of sight just long enough and with the help of the Amplification Matrix, Asher just melts Janice. 
Despite the kill from Toronto, things still look grim because Sansom throws a diva bomb right at them while Otto finishes off the immortality field. However, Yakpung throws a perfect shield just in the nick of time to block and protect Asher here and he's able to live. He heals himself off and cleans up the rest of Washington with the help of the rest of the team. Although Batiste's immortality field was a huge factor in protecting Bastion through all the Hanzo dragons, amazing timing and execution from the Defiant were the keys to full holding this map. GG's to the Washington Justice and I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the Defiant Breakdown.